Today we are here to talk about beading versus sheeting. We left a bunch of water beads on the finish. We turned on an IR lamp. In about an hour, it was completely filled with water spots. You see all this water had come together and I do my tissue test. If this was full of beads, how would that tissue look? Welcome to the Dr. Beasley's Clean Room, everybody. I am the Director of Success, Chris Ricana, and today we are here to talk about beading versus sheeting. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and like and subscribe to the Dr. Beasley's YouTube channel. Victor and I work really hard to bring you this content, so let's keep this momentum uh, going by having you guys like and subscribe to our channel. That helps us out a bunch. So anyway, back to beading versus sheeting. What is the difference? Why are they different? and what is better for protecting our paint. You know, first we really gotta look at the science of hydrophilic and hydrophobic, and is it even hydrophilic? Is that even the right term? Let's talk to Victor, and he's gonna tell us what the real deal is. Thanks, Chris. So when a detailer is talking about water being repelled from a surface, typically they're gonna use words like sheeting and beading. Now, in general, when a detailer is talking about beading, they're talking about the tendency of water on a protected surface to form together into tiny little spears on the finish. This is happening because paint protection is engineered to adhere weakly with water. So that makes the water molecules only attracted to themselves. That creates an inward force that brings the molecules together into beads of water. Now, when a detailer is talking about sheeting, on the other hand, they're generally referring to the tendency of water on some protected surfaces to form into pools of water that sheet off of the finish. The idea is that when the water sheets off, it's leaving a dry surface behind. All right, now here is where things get a little confusing. Now, a lot of people, including ourselves at Dr. Beasley sometimes, will refer to this as hydrophilic because it doesn't look like the hydrophobicity that we're used to seeing on protected surfaces. But hydrophilic isn't really the right word to describe these types of coatings. The fact is, most coatings that we consider hydrophilic are actually hydrophobic coatings. They're just not the kind of hydrophobics that we're used to seeing. They're not the thousands of tight water beads forming on the paint surface. It's a little weaker than that. So instead on these sheeting surfaces, water pools together and then sheets off. But for the sake of clarity, we'll refer to this as hydrophilic sheeting. Now here's where things get even more confusing. Beading protection can also be sheeting protection. That's because a lot of times the difference between beading and sheeting is really just the volume of water being thrown at the surface and how quickly. So you'll see in real life that, you know, water from light rain or from a sprinkler is going to form into little beads on the surface. That's because there's not much volume or speed behind that water. But when you see water coming out of a pressure washer, you'll see the water sheet off almost immediately. So just to summarize, beading is when you see small discrete spears of water appearing on the finish. Sheeting, however, is when the water pools together and then sheets off of the finish. And remember, there are two kinds of sheeting. Hydrophilic sheeting, where you see water pool together and then sheet off the finish. And then hydrophobic sheeting, where you have large volume or high speeds of water coming at the finish and then sheeting off immediately. The first happens because the surface isn't hydrophobic enough to produce tight little water beads. And the second happens because the surface is so hydrophobic, water just immediately comes off when it's coming at a fast enough speed and a large enough volume. Now onto the big question. Which is better for your paint? It depends on a lot of factors, but for most people, a sheeting coating is gonna be better. Here's why. When beads of water are left behind on a car to dry and the water is hard, they can form into water spots that can either bond to the paint or eventually etch it. Just see what happened on this hood that we protected with our super hydrophobic Nano Resin Pro coating. We left a bunch of water beads on the finish and then we turned on an IR lamp. In about an hour, it was completely filled with water spots. And like I said, those can bond to your paint and eventually etch through. Now we're gonna see a quick demo from Chris on what a sheeting coating looks like in practice. All right, thanks Victor for that explanation of hydrophobic versus hydrophilic or I don't know, let's leave it to the smarter people to figure that one out. But we're talking about beading versus sheetings. How are we going to measure the water repellency of a sheeting coating versus a beading coating? It's called the tissue test. What we're gonna see here is how this Sheeting coating, it, the water's just gonna grab, come together, and it's gonna just dump off the panel. So let's get. And we're seeing it come together and dump off. So once again, let's do it again. Yep. 
And you see all this water come together and just see it just coming together. You know, it's not beating up, but look how it's all coming together. And then it's just dumping off the front of the car. So that way, when I come back and I do my tissue test, what do I got there, people? What do I got? Now I want you to tell me if this was full of beads, how would that tissue look? So why is sheeting better than beading? If you're a professional in a facility, something like we have here in the Dr. Beasley's clean room, it's really not a must because we have a DI water system. We have compressed air piped in all around this building. So after we wash a car, we're inside, it's temperature controlled, we can blow the car off, and then we can address those areas. And anything that we have left on the wall, on the, I'm sorry, any areas where we still have water remaining on the car, it's a DI water system. So if you have reverse osmosis, you have DI, no problem. But what happens when I get home? I live up in Wisconsin, I got hard water. I do not have Swiss tracks in my garage, I do not have a drain, it is not heated. So I pull my car out in the driveway and I wash my car just like every other schmo. Now, when I wash my car out in my driveway, and it's July in Wisconsin, and it's hot, I am chasing things like crazy because what don't I want? I don't want water spots. And this is where a sheeting coating is crucial because when I'm washing my car up in Wisconsin, I just come in with my hose and I just wash off that panel. I just watch all that water run off that panel. And if anything, I got a couple little areas I gotta touch up. So this way, when I wash my car at home, I'm not freaking out about water spots during my rinse process. So this is where a sheeting coating can really pay dividends for the enthusiast. When you are doing it at home and you do not have that DI in your garage, you do not have that drain, you do not have all the advantages of a professional detailing facility, you really want a sheeting coating because this is gonna save your behind and this is gonna keep your paint looking well and keep you happier because you're not gonna be dealing with little water spots and all sorts of other things because you try to go wash your car and you screwed yourself. So, in the end, you have hydrophobic coatings and then you have, what? Slightly less hydrophobic coatings, right? So, what do you like? Listen, if you're a beater, this, go with the beating, man. It's all good. But for me personally, I like sheeting coatings because when I'm at home, I like to not worry about it. I enjoy it. I say, why pay a shrink when I can sit in my driveway for three hours washing my car? But if I wanna do it and still enjoy it, I don't wanna have to fight water spots. So that's why I'm going with a coating that sheets. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us at the Dr. Beasley's Clean Room. Once again, I am Chris Ricana, Director of Success. Behind the camera is Victor, our Communications Manager. I wanted to thank him, he does a great job for us here. And again, folks, please do reward us for our hard work. Go ahead and like and subscribe, and don't be afraid to hit that notification bell, so that way you will be notified when we drop more content. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, I gotta, forget, I gotta remember my sign off. That's right, people. Remember, if you are driving in the left lane and you're not passing anyone, it is time to move over to the right. Help me educate America, people. Left lane for passing, middle lane for cruising, right lane for entering and exiting the expressway. Thanks again, everybody.